I just want to introduce the second section of our meeting. Uh, I think that uh, you noticed that uh, the first section was uh, completely dedicated to microRNAs, and maybe now uh, you have an impression that we stopped with ELISA, we forgot about ELISA, so don't panic. We have still uh, several interesting parameters in our ELISA development pipeline. And uh, we have still our ELISA development team, which is located in Bratislava, not far from, from Brno. You can remember the, the map from my presentation. And uh, now I would like to introduce Vierka. She's a head of this uh, ELISA development team and the head of the uh, Slovak part of BioVendor. And she will uh, speak about, uh, she will tell you more about our new ELISA. So thank you, Martina, for the introductory words. And uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, pl I'm pleased that I can be here and that I can um, bring you ELISA news. As uh, already uh, Martina told you, so um, ELISA or uh, protein biomarkers are still core products of BioVendor R&D division and uh, each year we launch new ELISA products for interesting molecules from various fields of interest. Uh, we have recently launched a few, a few products to enlarge our portfolio of onco markers ileal fatty acid binding protein or FABP6 uh, and endocan, uh, placental growth factor, uh, PGF, a uh, promising oncomarker but nowadays well known in a pathophysiology of pregnancy, myosin binding protein uh, in um, a promising uh, um, biomarker in uh, cardiovascular diseases, and uh, hepatocyte growth factor is coming soon. And uh, nowadays, currently, we work, we work on uh, three interesting molecules uh, involved in inflammation. I will tell you more about uh, five of, of them. And let's start with the ileal fatty acid binding protein. Uh, it's a protein which um, is a part of fatty acid binding protein family. And it's a, let's say, cancer-related protein. As you can see in this uh, picture here, this is a PCR analysis of um, expression of uh, uh, FABP6 mRNA in uh, tissue. Here under T we have uh, uh, this part A uh, is uh, uh, regarding uh, colorectal tissue and T marked bands are uh, colorectal tissue uh, samples and N are normal, what do you have? And it's a normal, and you can see the band uh, for uh, colorectal tissue and uh, no band for normal samples. Also, this is the analysis in uh, uh, serum samples. Normal have also uh, all, almost zero, uh, zero um, expression and, uh, and uh, cancer samples with, high, uh, is, uh, high, with higher expression. Again, uh, comparison in uh, 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 tissue extracts, normal group, adenoma tumor, and uh, lymph node metastasis. Um, um, fatty acid binding protein uh, acts in a cell as an intracellular transporter of bile acid in the ileal epithelium. And uh, as we no, bile acids are strongly implicated into cancer development, especially into development of colorectal cancer, and that's why that is a strong association with, uh, within colorectal cancer and FABP6 or ileal uh, fatty acid binding protein. Uh, together with <laughs> other members of uh, uh, family of fatty acid binding protein, um, FABP6 uh, can act in uh, prostate cancer, bladder cancer, or also kidney cancer. Um, let me take a minute to 
give you a few information about the family of fatty acid binding protein. It's a family of small proteins which bind and transport lipids between membranes, especially bile acids and the long chain fatty acids. So they are involved in lipid metabolism in, uh, in organism. Uh, nowadays, there are identified 12 members of uh, this family, or let's say um, 12 isoforms of uh, this protein. And we have got uh, ELISA for determination of uh, three, five of them. About ileal fatty acid binding protein, you have already heard right now. And I will tell you more within my um, other presentation about FABP3 as uh, in a section of uh, cardiomarker. And uh, you, will, you will learn more also about FABP4 in uh, a presentation about lipid metabolism. I hope so. No, so you will not. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, uh, but for next year or next uh, kind of action, I can, I can prepare for some more information also about uh, this protein. So, uh, this was a, a family of fatty acid binding protein and our new product, FABP6. Another product, Endocan, is uh, overexpressed in tumor cells and promotes tumor growth. And its expression is high in uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, colorectal uh, cancer, gastric cancer, and others. That's why it's, uh, it's uh, considered to be a very good diagnostic marker in oncology, but also prognostic marker, as well as target of cancer therapy, as uh, Tumor size and growth is uh, strongly uh, associated with endocrine expression in cells. Um, next two proteins I would like to tell you more about are growth factor, uh, placental growth factor, and hepatocyte growth factor. Two different molecules with a very similar or same uh, utility in angiogenesis. And uh, let me tell you what angiogenesis is, just for to remind you. It's a process of formation of blood vessels from pre-existing capillaries, and it's an important and continuous process, uh, which occur both in health and also in disease. This is a demonstration how it works and how it looks in uh, health. And um, in cancer biology, tumor-associated angiogenesis is observed. And uh, let's see this picture on the right. Small tumor, so I will explain you a bit how it works. Um, small tumor, hypoxic, seeking for nutrients, induced expression of angiogenic factors, among others, also our placental growth factor and hepatocyte growth factor. And this expression induces formation of capillars. Those capillars then feed the tumors. Tumor and tumor can grow. And uh, the process is uh, completed by life-threatening metastatic spread to circulation. Many studies nowadays uh, uh, focus on blocking this expression as a very promising and effective uh, strategy for um, tumor therapy. Placental growth factor itself is also uh, now in clinical areas uh, known as a biomarker in preeclampsia diagnosis. So it's a, and preeclampsia is a pregnancy-specific multi-organ syndrome characterized by widespread endothelial dysfunction, uh, damage and placental dysfunction, which can lead to preterm delivery and to other serious complications. There are two biomarkers. Um, closely related to placental dysfunctions, angiogenic factor, our placental growth factor, PIGF, 
which is downregulated during placental dysfunction, and anti-angiogenic factor soluble forms like tyrosine kinase receptor 1, SFLT1, which is upregulated during this state. And the ratio, ratio of those two biomarkers um, is uh, now well described and method for diagnosis and for prediction of, um, of um, preeclampsia. So in this case, we can offer placental growth factor for now. Let me return for a while to hepatocyte growth factor, which we already know as a angiogenic factor and uh, as a growth factor it's um, kind of quite unique because through binding on its receptor on a cell surface it can um, activate and regulate lots of uh, lots of um, processes in cells uh, like uh, proliferation and migration of endothelial cells and uh, that's why this protein is um, important in uh, biological and in uh, pathophysiological uh, wound healing processes like wound, wound healing and tissue regeneration. Uh, moreover, uh, hepatocyte growth factor is uh, uh, the protein that plays a role in inflammation. Uh, the protein inhibits inflammatory uh, processes and it has a kind of uh, protective role in autoimmune inflammatory diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, asthma, uh, autoimmune myocarditis and autoimmune neuroinflammation. And again inhibition of uh, this binding uh, could be an attractive strategy for treating of oncology patient and a patient with uh, autoimmune diseases. Last protein I would like to mention in this uh, presentation is uh, cardiac myosin binding protein or myosin binding protein C. Myosin binding proteins are uh, proteins that can, which can bind on myosin filaments in muscles and uh, cardiac myosin binding protein is uh, restricted uh, to um, hard muscle, so myocard, and that's why it's very specific for heart injury. And it was identified very recently as a very promising um, biomarker of uh, myocardial injury. And um, few proof of, or lots of, few of concept studies nowadays demonstrate that um, myosin binding protein is um, in uh, pathophysiology of uh, acute myocardial infarction, that uh, it is more abundant in a circulation than troponin and also uh, is released earlier than troponin within three hours after acute myocardial uh, infarction. And the point is that cardiac myosin binding protein it strongly correlates with the uh, uh, cardiac troponin and moreover it demonstrates greater diagnostic accuracy than a troponin. So we have to know that um, troponin is um, let's say um, golden standard in the pathophysiology and in diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction and heart, heart failure. So, uh, so um, the um, myosin binding protein can be very promising marker for early state uh, diagnosis of uh, a heart failure. Please remember this protein. I will mention it again in my next presentation. And remember, cardio, ca myosin binding protein or cardiac myosin binding protein and that it's uh, released within three hours after myocardial infarction. And um, currently, 
we are working uh, now on uh, three interesting molecules which are connected to inflammation and uh, as we know inflammation is at the root of many diseases and many pathophysiology states so that might be very interesting marker uh, in the future and I hope I will have an opportunity to tell you more about them some on some other occasion. <laughs> so for now, thank you very much for attention.